tonight's video, I thought we could do something a little bit different from the usual. I have decided, um, after a lot of requests, to show you guys my updated Yu-Gi-Oh card collection. Uh, I think the last time I did this was almost, or around, three years ago. Uh, so a lot has changed since then, and the binder, or the collection, has really, uh, let's just say, evolved. Um, for better or for worse, that's up to you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, tonight I'm gonna be showing you guys my, this, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh binder that, uh, I've been collecting for a couple of years now, and, uh, I've, I've really dumped way too much money into this game. Yeah, look, needless to say, I had a bit of a problem, uh, with spending too much money on Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but, um, I saw Moist Critical start doing his Yu-Gi-Oh card series, and it just really made me want to, um, make this video for you guys, as, uh, I got a lot of comments as well of people asking for an updated Yu-Gi-Oh card collection video. So, I'm not exactly too sure what this binder is worth by itself. Um, if I had to guess, it would be an Australian dollar up to 75000 Um, yeah, I know, it's, I have a problem, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, that, that is something I'd have to guess. I mean, if I can be bothered, I'll put a, a little calculator adding the values of all the cards together, going off TCG player or something. But, um, anyway, all of these cards' values are subject to change, um, if you watch this video at a future time. Um, but if I had to round about guess, I'd say it's somewhere between 50 to 80, 90, or I'm, I'm not sure, $1,000. So, um, with that said, let's get into it. Uh, for now, at least, none of these cards are for sale before someone <laughs> tries to message me. But, um, yeah, with all that said, um, I hope you enjoy the video. And, uh, sit back, relax, get a bag of popcorn, or just chill out, and, uh, let's get into this collection. So, starting with the first page, um, apologies for this super glue stain right here. Uh, this is the first page of the binder, and I'm sure if you know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! or the trading card game, or watched the TV show or the anime, uh, some of these cards will just immediately scream out to you and scream out to your childhood. Um, but let's get into it. So, so first up, we have a couple different printings, a couple, couple different copies of Dark Magician himself. Um, this was Yugi's Ace Monster, and uh, this card has virtually been printed into oblivion. It's been reprinted so many times. But this version of Dark Magician that I'm showing to you right now, um, I think, I'm pretty sure it's the most expensive printing of it. This is the DDS printing of Dark Magician. Basically, to get this version of the card, you had to, I believe, uh, you had to get this card from the Game Boy Advanced game that was released in about the early 2000s, and so it's really, it's quite hard to find, you know, and not just to find, but to have it in this condition, it's a near mint copy, so I have, um, well, I have three of these, um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you might ask, why do you have three of everything, or so many copies of the same card, and, uh, it's just because in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can play three copies of the same card in your deck. So, um, it's called a play set to have three copies of the same card. So I have three copies of the DDS print. I have some other printings of Dark Magician here, and, um, well, I have to look at this one. This is the infamous Blue Eyes White Dragon. <laughs> um, if you've seen the anime, if you've seen the show, this card is infamous. It's virtually one of the most popular cards in pop culture, it seems. Uh, this is the starter deck Kaiba version that was released all the way back in 2002, I believe. But when I started collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I just knew that I had to get 
my hands on Blue Eyes White Dragon and on three of them because Kaiba has three of them in the show, right? This, by the way, isn't the most expensive printing of Blue Eyes, um, but it's up there, you know, it's in near mint condition. And it's from the original structure deck, and it's first edition, so it'd be worth, I would say, about $500 per copy, something like that. There are other printings that get into the tens of thousands, especially if you start collecting uh, graded cards or cards in an a immaculate condition. But um, this is just so nice. I, I just love this card. Anyway, so that's the... Uh, those are my favorite cards. I'll move the binder over because we're going to turn the page here. So turning over the page, we have some ultimate rare cards. In Yu-Gi-Oh, there are many different kinds of printings of cards. You have so many different types, but ultimate rare is, well, if you couldn't tell, is pretty elusive, I suppose. On this page, we have some uh, spell and trap card destruction cards. So, I'm sure if you played even a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! or watched the show, you might recognize this card. It's Mystical Space Typhoon. And its effect just simply says, target one spell or trap card on the field and destroy that target. So this is Mystical Space Typhoon. It's in its ultimate rare printing. And um, you might not be able to tell on the camera, but it's got that cool, neat little foiling to it. And that's what makes it ultimate rare. Um, so yeah. And there are other versions. Mystical Space Typhoon is a very old card. And like any game, uh, power creep is a very big factor to the game. So this is, if you will, sort of one of the modern versions of uh, Mystical Space Typhoon. This is Dwin Twisters. It's a little tornado you can see there. Looks like a hat and a bottle is being picked up or something. Anyway, this card says discard one card, then target two up to two spell traps on the field and destroy them. So you get to destroy two cards instead of one. Yeah, but obviously, uh, you know, as its place. We have Cosmic Cyclone. This is a basically mystical space typhoon, but instead of destroying that card, it banishes that card instead, which has its applications. So that's in its ultimate rare printing. Anyway, uh, on this page we have some pot cards. If you have ever watched um, the anime, then, or have even played a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, you might recognize the card Pot of Greed. I'll have that on the screen. And well, um, that card is so famous, but ironically, it's actually uh, banned from competitive play. So you're actually not even allowed to play that card in your deck. Um, so what they've done instead is basically make different, worse versions of Pot of Greed. And um, these are just some of the examples. You have Pot of Duality. This card basically lets you look at the top three cards of your deck and add one of them to your hand, but you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn. So um, it's, it's worse than Pot of Greed, obviously, but you can play three copies of it in your deck. We have of Avarice in Ultimate Rare First Edition. This card lets you draw two cards, but you must shuffle five cards from your grave into your deck. And then the controversial Pot of Desires in Ultimate Rare Printing. This card lets you draw two cards, but you must banish the top ten cards of your deck. I remember when this card was seeing a lot of controversy because it's such a high cost. You have to banish 10 cards from your deck and you can never use them again, but you get to draw two cards. To 
turning over to the next page, we have some more Ultimate Rare cards. Um, I won't spend too much time going over every single one. I'll just point out my favorites, I suppose. Um, so let's see, what do we have here? Uh, this card is really cool. Allure of Darkness. It is a spell card that lets you draw two cards, but you must banish one dark monster from your hand. Really cool card. First edition. There, I have three copies, but they're not all in the same language. I think I have one in French and one in Italian. So, it's whatever. Uh, this is a really nice card. This is Forbidden Chalice. I actually think this is one of the better looking Ultimate Rare cards. And I'm not sure which language this is, but essentially you get to negate the effect of any monster your opponent controls. Pretty cool. As its unique applications, anyway. Uh, some more Ultimate Rare cards. This is also one of the better looking ones. Brilliant Fusion. Just looks so good. Unfortunately, it's banned from competitive play, but someday you'll return Brilliant Fusion. Alright, next we have um, some more Ultimate Rare cards. Um, really nothing to be said. This is another cool one, which I think I remember Yugi used in the show at some point. Spell Shattering Arrow. This was actually used in competitive play a few years ago. Really cool card. Okay, so here we have some books. So here we have Book of Eclipse. This is actually a very cheap card, but it's a competitive play. Um, here we have two different play sets of Book of Moon. So, this is the ultimate rare printing of Book of Moon, and its effect basically lets you to target a monster on the field and change it to face down defense mode. Okay, so I have two different play sets, one of the ultimate rares, and these are the uh, champion pack copies of Book of Moon. Definitely one of the more uh, expensive cards I have in my collection. It's in near mint condition and English, and it's just a very old printing of Book of Moon found in, if you can see the letters there, um, it says chat CP02. Uh, that set was the Champion Pack 2 set. So, um, I, I, don't, I don't even know why I bought these. This was probably shouldn't have, but whatever. So, that's Book of Moon. I have them in English, which makes them pretty expensive. I'm not sure what the playset is worth. It's probably uh, somewhere around 1500 US. Yeah, I know, I have an issue. Uh, turning over the page, we have some more cards. Um, a couple of cool cards here. System Down, Ultimate Rare First. Dark World Dealings, uh, Pyromation, Tanky. Um, I actually like Dark World Dealings, I'll take a look at that. This card lets you, or well, sorry, it says that each player draws a card, and then each player discards a card. I'm not really sure what these are worth at the moment. Again, I'll, I'll try to put a calculator or something around here to give you an estimated value. Anyway, one of them is unlimited printing. And to just show you what that means, um, when I say first edition and unlimited, see how you might not be able to see, but it says first edition right there on the card. So that's the first wave of printing of that particular card versus the unlimited, which doesn't have that first edition stamp. And you might think, well, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but 
when it comes to valuing and pricing cards, it makes a tremendous difference, especially when you're collecting cards. Sorry. Anyway, here we have, oh, I like this card a lot. This is Charge of the Light Brigade. Just such a pretty looking card. In first edition, pretty nice. It's just so shiny. Um, next, we have Invocation. This is another just really cool looking ultimate rare card. And it's used in competitive decks at the moment. Um, enemy Controller. This is another very famous card that you might recognize from the show. It's really cool when cards from the anime are actually used in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. You might see, I think Kaiba uses this card against Yugi a couple times in the show. And it's very cool. Next page we have our just some more competitively relevant cards. Uh, this is a cool one. So the, this card is Lightning Storm. Um, it's a very, very powerful card, and the effect says that if you control no monsters, you can use one of the following effects to destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls, or destroy all, all spell or trap cards your opponent controls. And uh, this is in a, you might notice it's got a bit of a weird shine to it. So this is a Starlight Rare card. Starlight Rare cards are, I would say, incredibly rare, way rarer than anything else uh, at the moment that they're printing in Yu-Gi-Oh! To give you an idea just how difficult it is to find a Starlight Rare card, when a set releases, uh, usually when you buy you'll get 12 boxes, you know, if you've ever gone to a booster, if you've ever, if you've ever bought Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you get them in those booster packs, okay? Well, those booster packs, 24 of them, 24 of those booster packs equal one booster box. And to give you an idea, the chances of pulling this card from its set is about at the very, you know, generously saying one in 12 or so boxes, I would say. And then that's not to say that because there are other Starlight Rare cards in that set. So the chances of pulling this particular Starlight Rare from a booster box or from a booster pack is, I, I couldn't even imagine what the chances were. Um, but we have a couple of these. And, um, well, I regret buying these, to be honest. Well, if I had to estimate what they're worth, oh, probably for the playset, it would be, uh, I would say anywhere from about 1800 to about 3000 US dollars. So we'll move on. Here we have some more just generic spell cards that are competitively relevant. Here we have some spellbook cards and ultimate rare printing. Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Pretty cool card. He lets you add any spellbook card from your deck to your hand. And a Spellbook of Secrets in Ultimate Rare Printing. Anyway, continuing on. Just some more spellbook, or spell cards rather. And nothing really much to say here. Okay, so this next page, we have some blue-looking monsters. These are called uh, Link Monsters. They're a, I would say, kind of new integration into Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so I'll show you a couple of these. On this side, we have the Sky Strikers. It's a fan-favorite archetype in the game that is really strong. Um, they're not as 
as powerful as they used to be as Konami uh, essentially banned one of their best cards, but they still see competitive play to this day. And uh, yeah, so this is Sky Striker Ace Kagari. It's basically a weeb deck, to be honest with you. Um, I don't even play the deck, but they just look really nice. We have Sky Striker Ace Shizuku. Sky Striker Ace Hayate. And Sky Striker Ace Kaina. Probably the worst one of all of them, to be honest with you. But anyway, she, she puts in her work. Um, so down here we have some more Starlight Rare cards. Um, this is one of the quintessential Starlight Rare cards. It's Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess. So this card is a Fairy Link effect monster. And to make this card, you need to use two monsters with different names, except tokens. And its effect says, basically, that you can only control one bow of the goddess. The original attack of this card becomes 800 times the number of link materials used to summon it. Once per turn, or sorry, once per chain. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can make this card lose exactly 800 attack. And if you do negate the activation. So if you use four guys to make her, she can negate four times, which is pretty strong. Um, this card, I believe, is worth nearly 1,000 US dollars or something like that. I know Yu Gi Oh! Yeah, I, I don't know. We have IP Mascarina in Starlight Rare. One of my favorite ones. Really strong card. Um, and then we have here the the Charmers, which are some really cool cards. They just look really nice, so I had to pick them up. You know, I'm not sure what these are worth. Maybe a few thousand. Anyway, yeah, I wasn't joking when I said I've um, spent too much money on this game. Turning over to this page, we'll start seeing some monster cards. Um, these cards are all competitively played in the game. We have Effect Veiler. This is in its uh, Starlight Rare printing. I believe this card is at least at least um, 650 US per copy, and uh, this card is this card's effect says that you can during your opponent's main phase you can send this card from your hand to the grave, then target one effect monster your opponent controls and negate its effects. So uh, I picked up a couple of these. I don't actually use these cards in my deck as I don't want to damage them and because they're worth so much I you know I don't want to risk that so I just keep them in the binder safe and sound on basically on the this page I don't use them but on this page I actually can use them they're a less expensive printing of these cards we have in Starlight Rare Printing. So this card uh, lets you banish any monster from your opponent's graveyard. So it's pretty good. And we have Ghost, Mourner, and Moonlit Jill in Starlight Rare. Actually kind of hard to tell, but this card basically lets you negate a monster's effect. Pretty simple. Um, here we have more effect veilers, but this is in the ultimate rare version. So you can see how 
they look a bit different. To be honest, I think this version looks a bit better. Um, but this one is way more expensive for some reason. I actually use these ones in my deck because they're less expensive, although I'm pretty sure first edition effect veilers are still a couple hundred dollars per copy. Anyway, we have DD Crow and Ultimate Rare Printing and uh, Ghost Mourner and Secret Rare Printing. For the page, we have just some more generically good cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! The game has basically been power crept and has sped up so fast that you need to have cards to basically use on your opponent's turn. Um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! the idea is if you lose the rock and paper scissors before deciding who goes first or second in a match, then you pretty much just lose the game because your opponent is just going to make some unbreakable board and you'll just lose without even getting to play the game. So to counteract this, they've released these cards to allow you to basically play on your opponent's turn to make sure that they can't blow you out of the water, to be honest. And all of these cards have their own unique effects and see competitive play in and out of formats. Sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're not so good. In some formats they're very powerful, in others they're not so much. So I won't go into all of them, but I'll just point out a couple of my favorite ones. This is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And its effect allows you to destroy any monster your opponent controls, or any face-up card your opponent controls when its effect is activated. This is Psyframe Kirigama in Collector's Rare First Edition. Really cool card. And one of the most ubiquitous hand traps, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. This card has seen so much play. Its effect basically says that when your opponent would either try to add a card from their deck to their hand, send a card from their deck to the graveyard, or summon a monster from their deck to the field, then you just say no, you can't do that. So, on the next page, we have just some more generically powerful cards that see competitive play in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So I won't really go too much detail into these ones. Um, next, we have a couple of cool cards. This one is really nice. Personal favorite of mine, this is Max C. Uh, this card is one of the most controversial Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever created in the game. It's banned, so you're not allowed to play this card in your deck. Although it might come back someday if Konami wants to bring it off the ban list. So this card's effect basically says whenever your opponent would special summon a monster, you just get to draw a card. And you guys, um, well as I said before, cards like Pot of Greed are banned. You know, drawing cards in the game is incredibly powerful. So, the fact that you get a draw whenever your opponent just summons a guy. Yeah, this card just got banned. So, um, I believe they'll bring it back, but I doubt it. Uh, this is a, another really nice looking card. Tour Guide from the Underworld. Really cool card. Recently came off the ban list. Before you could only play one copy, and then I think it moved from one to th two to three. So as I said in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can play three copies of the same card. But if a card is really powerful, then maybe you can only just play one copy. Konami will basically limit the card so you can only play one copy. Here we have some more cards which see competitive play. This is actually the Winged Dragon of Ra, 
It's one of the Egyptian god cards, which you might recognize from the anime. And, um, well, if you've ever seen it, then you've seen how it's in this big egg. It's actually very good, competitively. So here we have one of my favorite pages. Um, are, these are some more collector's rare cards. We have Sky Striker Ace Rose in Starlight Rare. Just a really nice looking card. We have a couple of these. Play sets of them. We have Chamber Dragon Maid. Starlight Rare printing. Have a couple of those. And then we have um, Unchained Twins Aruha. So this card is also really good in his respective deck and it's in Starlight Rare. So he's pretty expensive, I'd say. Again, I'll try to put something up here. So, And then of course we have the infamous powerful Egyptian god cards. You know, if you've seen the anime or watched the show, then these cards are just nostalgia. We have Obelisk, the Tormentor, Slifer, the Sky Dragon, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. So these cards were, I think, promotional cards that you had to get from, I think, either a video game or the movie. Um, so they're not legal. You can't actually play these cards in your decks, although they do have legal printings of them, but they're not actually very good, ironically. Um, but they're just so cool. What does Obelisk say? It says, the descent this mighty creature shall be heralded by burning winds and twisted land and with the coming of this horror those who draw breath shall know the true meaning of eternal slumber Slifer says the heavens twist and thunders roar signaling the coming of the ancient creature and the dawn of true power. And then the winged dragon of Ra says, Spirits sing of a powerful creature that rules over all that is mystic. Next we have the sacred beasts. So, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, it didn't just end with Yugi, they continued the series. Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, it didn't just stop with Yugi. They So in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, it didn't just stop with Yugi, and they continued on the saga. And in the next show, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, these are basically the Egyptian gods of that show. Okay, so you have... We got we have Rabiel, Lord of Phantasms, Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames, and Haman, Lord of Striking Thunder. So these are all in Nerman first edition English printings. So these are definitely some of the more expensive cards in my collection, and I really should just put them in the binder because I don't want to damage them to be honest. This next card is Cyber Dragon in Ultimate Rare Post Edition, Near Mint Condition. Um, one of them is actually kind of damaged, but really do like these ones. Page, we have some Ghost Rare cards. These cards are basically, are extremely unique. And they look very special. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick this up, but effectively you should be able to see an image of a monster. Maybe not with this one. Here we have some other really nice ghost rare cards. We have 
Stardust Dragon in Ghost Rare Printing. It's near mint condition and it's in first edition. So if I had to guess this one card by itself is probably in this immaculate condition, it's probably at least 1,400 US dollars. In Australian, it's about 2,000 or something. I know, Yu Gi Oh is a crazy game. The collector's market is definitely out of this world. We have Black Rose Dragon in Near Mint First Edition. Don't know if the. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You can probably see the dragon there. Black Rose. It's in Near Mint First Edition as well. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's Power Tool Dragon. See if I can get that shine on it. There we go. Really cool card. Um, Ancient Fairy. Ancient Fairy Dragon, another cool one. You can probably see that right there. And, um, well, yeah, we have a just a couple of them, but this is definitely one of my more expensive uh, favorite pages. Um, yeah. yeah. Over here we just have a couple dual terminal cards. So we have Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. You can see it says dual terminal. Dual terminal, for those of you that don't know, is basically a Yu-Gi-Oh card machine that they would have at events. And you could pay like a couple bucks and then it would give you a random Yu-Gi-Oh card. And in dual terminal rarity, you can see there are a couple polka dots almost on the card. So, um, yeah. Some other ghost rare cards like Rainbow Dragon. It's kind of hard to see in this camera lighting, but it's in first edition, near mint condition. So, yeah. And this page, I haven't really figured out what I want to do with it yet, but finally, we're in the end game. Here are some trap cards. Uh, trap cards aren't really that good in competitive Yu Gi Oh! or at least nearly as much as they used to be, as the game has become so power gripped and fast paced that slower decks that use trap cards just can't keep up. So we have these cards, Solemn Strike. This is one of the most powerful trap cards in the game. It's a counter trap as displayed by the little symbol there. And this card basically says that you can pay 1500 life points to negate the activation or summon of a special summon monster or whatever. Pretty cool. We have, so we have those in Ultimate Rare. We have Solemn Warning in Ultimate Rare First Edition printing. And Solemn Judgment. In ultimate rare. I actually don't think that this one looks very good, but it's whatever. Here we have some more generically good trap cards. Uh, Champion pack, threatening roar, and near mint. That's pretty good. Champion pack, mind crush. Champion pack is the printing or the edition or the set that it's from. To clarify. Here we have uh, some more trap cards. So all of these see some competitive play. Yeah. Infinite. So yeah. And that's pretty much it for the binder, guys. Um, that's gonna wrap that up, so yeah, like I said, estimated total value of the binder. Um, it's at least, I'd say, 50 to 
thousand, something like that. But for all of you enthusiasts out there, you can calculate it or I don't know, let me know what you think. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks again so much for watching and until next time.